I said I wasn't going to do it, and I meant it. But now I'm going to do it. Welcome back to my channel. And if you've never been here before, God help you. I already made this video last week with such tenderness and grace and that truck probably. And I have to make it again because things have changed. So hi, welcome. I'm gonna try and make this video as cohesive as I possibly, possibly can. Um, but they're fair warning, it might not be cohesive at all. Just know that I'm kind of trying, which is my whole brand, kind of trying. I also have a cold, so I imagine there will be a wicked um, compilation of coughing in the outtakes today, so there's a little something to look forward to. Today, we are talking about the one, the only, the thumbtack in my ass, Gabby Hanna. I'm gonna try to do this in parts if I can. And knowing me and how I do things about halfway through this video, I'm gonna forget that I was doing this video in parts and it's just going to become a disjointed mess. But hopefully it'll be coherent and cohesive enough that you can follow along and scream with me, okay? Manage your expectations a little bit. So roughly about two weeks ago, Gabby Hanna, who had been largely quiet on social media, which was a really nice welcome break from all the summers before. <laughs> Gabby had largely been quiet, staying out of other people's business, not screaming at people or scaring her cats, minding her own business, making music, doing art, self-promoting, you know, the usual Gabby Hanna shit. Gabby started posting on TikTok some very, very concerning things. A lot of people noted that this whole ordeal began um, as she was uh, voted out, essentially, of the independent artist competition that she was doing. It seemed to completely 100% coincide with not advancing to the next round. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about in my last video, I referenced it. Pew! Gabby's taking part in this contest for, in, I believe it's indie artists, small indie artists, and they get an opportunity to open for a show at the Hollywood Bowl if they win. And that's super fucked up <laughs> to me. I can appreciate that she's an indie artist, sure, but she also has a platform of literal millions and she's had record deals in the past that have either not worked out or she's passed on or both. God, YouTube sure has changed since I was a kid. I didn't have the internet when I was a kid because I'm a relic. So Gabby was part of a small artist competition, um, which is what everyone's calling it. And she's insisting that it's not. It's an independent artist competition, which I feel like is semantics. And we all know how Gabby feels about semantics. Get the fuck out of your own and if you it's... care that much about semantics. But it was a, an independent artist competition, according to Gabby. She was encouraging all of her followers on all her platforms, which combined is something, if you combine them all, like about 20 million between Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok, probably about 20 million at least, um, and encouraging them to vote for her to advance to the next round and to the next round and to the next round and she was ahead for a really long time and um <clears throat> she got she came in second at some point it seems like this is when the ball got rolling on her tiktok behavior now she started as you noted in the last video she was starting to talk about god a lot and religion um, a lot of what she said was misinformation. It seemed very convenient. These sort of things started to pop up around the time of her album release, which was last month, I believe. The end of last month. <clears throat> Excuse me, the end of July. So even before this most recent issue on, t on TikTok and at, for Gabby Hanna as a whole, she started already talking about God and spirituality and all of that, which is fine. Like, I want to be very clear that, like, even though I am an atheist, I have, as long as your religion is not hurting other people, as long as you are not trying to force it down other people's throats, as long as you are not um, hurting anybody with what you believe and the way that you practice your religion, I have no issue with theism. 
other than I, I don't subscribe to it for myself, but if it brings you comfort and and um, peace of mind to have something to believe in, and that is the truth for you, that's okay by me. And not that I'm like the <laughs> the arbiter of like, you can have religion because I said it's fine. I, I'm just saying, I, I want to preface these points of view by saying that like, I am atheist, but I don't necessarily have a problem with people being theistic. It's not an issue for me as long as nobody is being hurt, discriminated against, having religion forced upon them. <clears throat> I had a lot of people in my comments telling me they were going to pray for me. Please don't fucking pray for me. You don't have to pray for me. If we believe different, that's okay. If, if we believe different and that's a deal breaker for you and you got to go, that's okay. Just you don't have to pray for me. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to believe what you believe because you're praying for me, okay? Fast forward to uh, the end of August. I believe the 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. And Gabby starts putting out all of these very, very, very concerning TikToks. And it seems to come out of nowhere. God, I wish I could sleep. God, I wish I could sleep. I can't wait to sleep. God, please let me sleep. But I can't today because there's babies dying on the fucking street. Wake the fuck up. Wake the fuck up before we go to sleep. Wake the fuck up. There's babies on the street. The help me TikTok was really the one that I think set people off. Help me. Help me. Wake the fuck up. Help me help us. Gabby would later describe this TikTok as part of a spoken word thing, but um, I would consider what Gabby is saying about that TikTok to be um, gaslighting. <laughs> this The help me TikTok was because she's talking about, she made reference to um, dying babies. Is that negative to you? Are the dying babies on the street negative to you? Am I projecting them and myself onto you? You're damn fucking right. That's my God-given right. I'm helping people. This is what I'm doing. This is my God-given right, which is all well and good. That's perfectly fine. If that's what you feel is your God-given right, go for it. Knock yourself out. Um, but making nine, like, we're going to get to the crux of this issue, but just take this part at face value. Making 200 unhinged TikToks is not saving any babies. I don't know how else to put that. Before we continue, I do want to make a couple other prefaces. Like this video is riddled with prefaces and like addendums and notes because I want to be very, very careful about how I speak about these things because I want to be very excuse you. I want to be very clear because I don't want to further stigmatize in any way. I'm not going to sit here and say that Gabby Hanna's lying about a mental health crisis, okay? I'm just not going to do it. If that's what you believe, if you believe that everything she's done over the course of the past few weeks is an act, she has given you every reason to believe that. Absolutely. 100% and I would not judge you or criticize you or fault you for thinking that because she's given you every reason to believe that. What I do want to say is that I'm going to be referring to these, this time, these couple of days where she was posting all these TikToks, I'm going to be referring to this as a manic episode. It is what it appears to be. It is what Gabby has referred to it as. I just want to be clear that like, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not here to diagnose anything or say anything looks like anything. Judging by how people who have mania have said that this looks like a manic episode, judging by people who are also bipolar who have said that they've experienced similar things, um, and judging by Gabby Hanna's own calling this episode a manic episode, I am just going to, for the sake of brevity, just be referring to this as a manic episode. It doesn't mean I'm like trying to <clears throat> diagnose or, um, or state out of my realm of knowledge okay but just to be clear about that second of all i want you to know that like my thesis statement for this video is that mental health is not a fucking excuse for behavior that we're going to see um it can be the cause uh it's never the excuse so all that having been said let's carry on gabby spent the next day making 
well over 100 TikToks talking about being the second coming of Christ. Guys, just in case you maybe a little believe me that I could actually be the second coming of Jesus Christ, not Jesus Christ, not Mary the mother of God, but me, Gabby Hannah, my own name, Gabrielle Jeanette Hannah, son of John, deliverer of good news. It's almost like words have meaning, you dumb ah. Talking about uh, Mother Teresa. Do you ever wonder why nuns or Mother Teresa never get married, never have kids? Because they're not fucking selfish. Doing a lot of like hand gestures to make her points. Did you ask any questions of the woman who literally has everything she wants? Who is trying to encourage others to harness the power she clearly has? What if I were wrong? All humans make mistakes. I don't, mm, I know that part ain't mania. That's Gabby Hanna. Also like insisting that she was fine. I'm fine, by the way. <laughs> Are you? She also essentially, not even essentially, she also blamed her fans for not voting her into the next round of the, the independent artist competition. A group of artists with the shared mission to spread wealth. What will you do with the prize money, it, it asked. And I said, I will share it with the people who got me here. I was going to give away so much money. But how fun would it have been if I give an additional $100,000 because you guys fucking rallied and uplifted a woman and her talent and her art and her music, if you would listen to the words I was saying and be inspired by my fucking message to save the world. Also, apparently at one point tried to be Willy Wonka. <laughs> I don't need the approval of anybody, but God herself, himself, herself. It's almost, it's almost, it's almost as like I'm in heaven and you're all still stuck in hell. And if I don't save you still. Again, I'm not trying to make fun of this manic episode. I'm just trying to, for brevity's sake, tell you what happened because there are, I mean, this, I have a folder of hundreds and hundreds of TikToks, okay? Hundreds of TikToks from what it was essentially about three days and then, you know, maybe 25 from the past week. Beyond all of that, Gabby then started to say some really racist things. Why is it that when a black woman sings the praises of Jesus, gospel, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, preach, brother, preach, sister. Why is that okay? What do they know that we don't? Maybe that's why we're so fucking scared of black people. Is it because they have some type of power? But then when the white man found that power, they did everything they could to take it away. And for thousands of years, have, uh-uh, not on father times, watch your mouth, out with soap. He might just do it for you. Talking about how um, black women are always left to raise their family alone because their husbands leave. Are always left to raise their babies alone when the father leaves. It's almost like the mothers depended on God to get them through. And that white man were like, uh-oh, black people are powerful. That's scary. And instead of saying, hey, black people, hey, Native American Indians, you guys seem to be really peaceful and happy on your land. We just came here on this boat because we didn't like our homeland. She talks about herself as a woman of color. I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm gonna keep reminding you that I'm Middle Eastern and I have always been Middle Eastern. But for some reason, isn't it so weird that the world insists on seeing me as white?
I grew up in a black neighborhood. I was actually the only white girl in my neighborhood outside of my sisters. Specifically using the term colored to describe herself. So would you rather the kind colored girl stay in the ghetto like you want us to? Should I just stay out of the nice, beautiful neighborhood with the wonderful school district for my children? Gabby is of Middle Eastern descent, okay? I'm not denying that. I know that she is Lebanese, okay? I get it. Um, but what the fuck? I know you're not using the word colored to describe yourself. Like, I just wish some people knew the difference between race and ethnicity. And that's just coming from a white person. I, I'm, a, I'm a white, I am as white as you fucking get. I am of European descent. It's all white. It's all coming up white. I am so white, I'm fucking clear. Don't worry, it gets better. Because then she went on to insult, uh... Uh, people who become mothers young. I can't find that TikTok. If I can find the TikTok again, I will put it here. But she went on this diatribe about how she's waiting to have children until she was, you know, she was gonna do it right. She'd get the house, then the husband, then, then, then have the baby and blah, blah, blah. Stigmatizing young women and young people with uteruses just for existing, for having babies, for making a mistake and then having a kid or doing it on purpose and having a kid or whatever the case may be, or wanting to do things out of order. I'm a single parent and I fucking love being a single parent. There are so many different ways to live your life and I find it really interesting that the artist who insists that no one understands her is so quick to judge a group of people she doesn't understand. Again, I understand she was manic. This was part of this manic episode, but even when she came back and addressed it, it was the only part of this that she's actually apologized for, that she actually felt she was wrong about, and we're still not done. So now we have made a mockery uh, of black women. We have referred to ourselves as colored, even though at one point we referred to ourselves as white. And here's the thing about this, okay? This is the only thing I wanna say, and this is just from the perspective of a white person, so like, if you feel differently, please let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. But from the perspective of a white person, if you have any ability to say, I look white, I am white passing, I was the only white girl to do X, Y, and Z, you are reaping white privilege. The disconnect, ow, that hurt. The disconnect there is jarring. You're, you're literally trying to make yourself oppressed while simultaneously talking about your own white privilege. like. That there's a dichotomy there. So now it's time to move to the transphobia. So what you're going to see a lot of <clears throat> throughout the rest of this video is Gabby apologizing-ish with no sort of interest in actually being forgiven or actually showing real remorse before moving on to what exactly she meant by what she's saying. Hey, trans folk. I'm gonna give you some of mama's tough love right now. First of all, the last person on the planet who needs to be giving tough love is Gabby Hanna. Second of all, the last person that needs to be giving advice of any kind is Gabby Hanna. I want you to know that I'm here for you always. I will accept you through your journey no matter what. The choice is always yours to be happy. Why does it feel like a, <clears throat> feels like a milk ad from the 90s. But I'm telling you right now that if you learn to love yourself, Please, baby, please love yourself because I love you. No false idols. I am your mother. Love your body. Love what God gave you. It's fun. Every sick thought you have explored. Is this safe? Is this sane? Yes, baby. You are safe and you are sane. You are confused. And I'm here to help you and show you if you please because I love you. The deep-rooted transphobia in saying that trans people are confused is vile and i feel very comfortable saying that it's vile even though she's in this manic state because of how she followed it up later i am not a trans person i am cisgender queer but cisgender i don't know what it's like to be born trans if nothing else the exploration of finding your true gender identity is likely less confusing 
than it is clarifying. Oh, this makes sense. I'm a woman. Oh, this makes sense. I'm gender fluid. I'm non-binary. I'm a man. I'm a woman. This isn't the body I'm supposed to be in. If, if nothing else, it's clarity, not confusion. And chalking up the experiences of some of the most marginalized people in the fucking world to confusion is so fucking ignorant. I could fucking scream. I'm not gonna though, because I have a cold and I will cough for a century. Ow! But know that I am internally fucking screaming. Because this is unacceptable rhetoric, okay? Again, at this point, I know that she was manic, okay? Got it. Still not an excuse for bad behavior, but I understand maybe you say things you don't mean when you're in a manic state. Maybe you think because you're on this, you know, especially in Gabby's instance, you think you're on some sort of higher echelon of thinking. So this is like this brilliant, you know, um, epiphany that you've just come to, um, but you're wrong. You're very wrong. And uh, rhetoric like this has the potential to do a lot of damage. Not just for the trans folks, but for the black folks. Uh, I believe she made comments about indigenous folks. Um, all of these people, it, th these words have the potential to do harm. The way that I don't want to further stigmatize mental illness or mental health disorders or even a just a manic episode, whatever the case may be, Gabby Hanna has no regard for further stigmatizing issues. She has no regard for it. It's insane. But I digress for now because there's a whole bunch of other fun stuff that's gonna happen. While Gabby like silently laughs uh, at people, sh you know, expressing concern, or even just downright browbeats them for showing concern. I used every single resource that was given to me, and that's why I am so successful. Honestly, aside from like confusion, most of the comments and most of the videos that had been made about Gabby during this time period were actually very concerned people, um, people who were disturbed by what they were seeing, people who were confused by what they were seeing, um, and people trying to decipher whether or not this was another attempt at attention because that is part of her pattern. I think this was a legitimate manic episode. I don't think that this was solely for attention. I think maybe at one point she started to come down and then continued it out of an expectation of more attention because, I mean, she made TMZ, so. And by the time she acknowledges that, you can tell the way she receives things like that is that she feels powerful. She feels like she has social media at her fingertips. She can make a scene and I myself said at that time that I had no intention of making a video and I meant it. I really meant it. I didn't want to make a video about it because I did and still do believe that she was having an actual manic episode or a psychotic break or something wasn't right. And I thought it better that she get help and treatment and care than I make a video. Now, when I filmed the video on f Saturday, I still felt uncomfortable about it. I didn't want to make a video where I was like, look at all this shit Gabby Hanna did while she's having an actual mental health crisis of some sort. And then she chose to double down on pretty much everything. But before that happened, um, on the second major day of like, I just, delusions and hundreds and hundreds of TikToks. Gabby had a knock at her door from someone named Nick. Oh, oh hi. Hi. Do you use your bathroom? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Come on. Thank you. Right there's fine. Oh, thank What's you. your name? My name is Nick. Nick? Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Right there. Is right okay? here? Right there. Right here? Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
who had next to no followers on TikTok until he started filming himself outside of Gabby's house. Alexander Gabby Hamilton's house. Why do you write like you're running out of time? In the middle of a mental health crisis, Googles her address, finds it, and comes to her door asking to use her bathroom. God, this kid has not had the fucking lashing that he deserves. Because I don't really particularly like Gabby Hanna, but I do not condone, I do not think it is appropriate, I do not think it is okay to Google a stranger's address, especially a public figure who is going through a fucking mental health crisis publicly. It is inappropriate and disgusting to find their home and break in by way of coercion. Telling her you don't know who she is, that you just need to use her bathroom, and then filming inside her home. There are TikToks where she's not in them and he's in her bedroom. I'm sorry, who is not calling this kid out? Because fuck him for this. He's lucky he didn't get fucking arrested. And I think the only reason that he didn't was because everybody was so distracted by the fact that Gabby Hanna was posting 9,000 TikToks. So when Gabby finally got wind that this little piece of shit was in her house filming and knew who she was and knew what he was doing, she told him to get the fuck out. By the way, Nick? Yes. I know you know who I am. Come on. Why did you lie to me this whole time? Why did you this? lie to me? That's for my acne, you dumb cunt. Get the fuck out of my house, now. Now, now! And this is the only part of the story in which I will stand behind Gabby Hanna a thousand fucking percent. A lot of her viewers were saying that he stole a Cartier bracelet of hers as well, which I think she just tuned into like yesterday. Oh my God, oh my God. <sighs> and we're still not done. Gabby then um, gets multiple calls of wellness checks and I'm trying to sort of piece together what exactly happened because according to Gabby she's had a series of wellness checks her neighbors had called the police on her at one point for screaming all the while she had this situation with this kid in her house and I guess immediately after this kid left the police basically broke in to her house, cuffed her, held her there, had her speak with some mental health professionals, and they deemed her not a danger to herself or others. Now, apparently this has happened a few times where the police come to her house, and it seems like according to the way she tells the story, which again, you can only take Gabby with like a giant, you know like, you know like when winter is about to start and like you drive past like the, the plow you know, building and there's like those mountains of fucking salt for, um, for, for, you know, before there's like a winter storm and they're going to put it all over the ground and like ruin the paint on your car. <laughs> um, like one of those mountains of salt is like what you have to take every Gabby Hanna story with. But the way she kind of explains it, it's like they were irritated that they had to continue to come to her house to check on her because there had been so many concerning wellness checks and she had been posting so many concerning TikToks. She wants to blame her, you know, haters, tabloids, whatever, trolls for the police being called to her house. The police are being called there for a wellness check. Okay, so that comes from a place of concern. You don't troll somebody by having a wellness check. Like, that's, that's not a troll. And like I had said before, most of the people that had spoken about this situation publicly were pretty respectful and mostly were concerned. Here's my question. And it's kind of rhetorical. It's kind of just like a thinking question because like the logical answer makes, you know, is, the, is right there and it makes sense. But like, why do we have to wait until someone is a physical danger to themselves or a physical danger to others before we act on helping them with their mental health issues. I, I, I just feel like there has to be a point where you can intervene in such a way that at least we can get the person grounded and back in a proper state of mind 
so that there aren't a hundred wellness checks on them. I just feel like it's a, um, it feels like there's a piece missing, right? There's a lot of pieces missing in the healthcare system in this country, but um, I, I feel like that's a huge chunk that if replaced with something useful, we could actually like, I don't know, save more lives. Because handing someone in a manic episode resources for like, oh, next time you feel sad or next time you wanna end it all or next time, you know, you ate too many grapes or whatever, like handing them that information isn't gonna be beneficial because especially in Gabby Hanna's case, she doesn't feel like she has a problem. She embraces her manic episodes. She embraces that about herself, which is fine, but there's also a responsibility to take care of yourself and to take care of those episodes and know how to know how to be safe so that you're not exhibiting behaviors of someone who is a danger to themselves, who could be a danger to others. I, you know, you're always welcome to embrace the things that people always want to stigmatize. You're welcome to embrace mental illness or health or mental health disorders. You're welcome to embrace your, you know, your your weight, your height, your facial features, you know, your disability, whatever the case may be, whatever society typically um, uses to to stigmatize or to belittle or to hurt people, you're welcome to embrace that. And that goes for, for mania. But you also have to be responsible and safe um, so you don't hurt yourself and you don't hurt others. I forget where I was going with this and why. I don't know. Anyway, by the end of those days, Gabby was washing her car and fascinated by the hose. And people were commenting like, hey, we're literally in a drought. Like, literally in a drought. And like, I don't know, <laughs> Mississippi doesn't have clean drinking water. Flint still doesn't have clean drinking water. And you're out here in a drought, just, just watering away. But also, then it became a conversation about how California wouldn't be in a drought. And then this is kind of where Gabby stopped for a minute and it got quiet and for one you know this time it was concerning where are you what are you doing you just spent two to three days making hundreds and hundreds of TikToks and now nothing when Gabby came back she started to do parts of what her manic episodes were but before she did that she decided to gaslight everybody. Help me! This is the video that prompted so much concern and caused me to literally go through trauma and being held fucking hostage in my home. No, 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 mm -mm. no, it's not. No, it's not. That did not, all of that was not prompted from that video. Gabby made hundreds of TikToks. I'm not exaggerating when I say hundreds of TikToks that were equally as disturbing and concerning as that one. And she went on and on and on and on and continued to upload them. That, that is what caused concern. That is why people called for wellness checks. That led to your trauma and being detained in your own home but go on literally and it's in response to a comment and if you click the comment it's on a video of a spoken word poem that I'm doing about not being able to sleep because there's starving children on the street and someone said oh my god somebody help her and I said yes help me help me help me help us but you did it while you were screaming and it was the catalyst for a bunch of other diatribes about being the second coming of Christ, about Mother Teresa, about being the mother of God, about all kinds of crazy shit. It's not about your spoken word poem. It's about the fact that you are screaming on TikTok and talking about very diluted things. Not to be confused with diluted things. 
water it down. Meaning, help me save the starving, dying children of the world. But again, I ask, what are you doing for the starving, dying children of the world? Because making 200 TikToks doesn't put food in a kid's mouth. Does not medically treat a child. Now that Gabby is out of the delusional, like manic state, I implore you, Instead of doubling down and saying, I just, I was trying to get help for all the, all the poor, you know, uh, uh, homeless, uh, you know, defenseless dying children. You could probably just say, yeah, yeah, wow, that was intense. I'll donate money from my creator fund this month. I'll donate to No Kid Hungry. Stand up for kids. I will donate to these causes. Let me show you how I'm helping. This is how you can help too. This is what my intention was. I wanted to encourage you to help me. And here's how you can. But no, you're too stupid to get my art is what she's trying to say. But all anybody wants to see is a woman screaming, help me. Yep, yep, that's it. It's misogynistic. Can't wait to get back to that point later. The reality of my existence in my career, and I've long since just kind of accepted it, which is why I just do whatever the fuck I want, and it's fine as long as people aren't like busting in my house and fucking threatening me. Years ago, I was assaulted at a party, and instead of that person being held accountable, I filed a police report, nothing was done. The entire internet, almost pretty much everyone except for a couple people, we're on his side. That's actually not true. And we've already rehashed this last year. Dude, like no one stood up for me. Nobody stood up for me except for Ricky Dillon, Andrea Russett, Tana Mojo. Oh, and Trisha Paytas. The petty way Trisha was added to this list of people. Jen Dad and Alex James did too, but. <laughs> So this dude tried to roast me because I stood up for my friend Gabby when he yet again used recycled content and tried to call her a joke thief, which has already been dealt with. And then he goes for a low blow and tries to talk about her physical appearance. Oh, well and good, that might be true. What is also true is that you don't put your hands on someone else, you don't take their property and destroy it. Stop victim blaming her. Uh, as much as I have not liked her in the past, I can't stand to see things like this happen. <laughs> Fuck them, I guess, right? I'm not saying get over your assault. I'm not saying get over what rice gum did to you. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that that is fucking irrelevant right now. It has nothing to do with this. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I'll say it again, absolutely nothing to do with this. I was victim shamed and bullied and I had human beings coming up to me, coming to my book tours, coming up to me while I'm shopping, harassing me, following me, making fun of my nose, making fun of my voice, demeaning me in public. Like I'm five foot five, I'm small, and fucking tall ass men following me around, making fun of me. Okay, I'm sorry about that. But what does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? And ever since then, it's just been one thing after another, and the tabloids of the internet have done everything in their power to just make me a fucking crazy, hysterical woman. Oh my fucking god! What are you talking about? This has nothing to do with any of you, yourself, of your own volition, with your own fucking iPhone, posted hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of TikToks, of telling people you were the second coming of Christ, of delusions, absolute fucking delusions. But this is about rice gum. The only person who isn't letting go of that is Gabby. And I'm again, I'm not saying you have to shove down your trauma, you have to shove down you know, something that obviously deeply affected her. But you cannot hold on to it with both hands and dig your nails in and hope to God that that's going to be the thing that's your get out of jail free card for the rest of your life. You don't get to act like an asshole. And again, I'm aware while she was acting like an asshole, she was also manic. But you don't get to act like an asshole and go, well, you know, this one time a guy threw my phone at a party and it was aggressive. So, 
Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the table so hard. <sighs> Mommy's not mad, she's just disappointed. Oh, and let's not forget that um, this was also part of it. Yes, this album was my favorite <laughs> era. And um, I always loved rock music. So I wanted to try a rock vocal and I never had the courage or the encouragement to scream. Now this is where a lot of people like jumped off the fucking ship and into the icy cold waters and they didn't even bother to try and fit on the door with Kate Winslet, you know what I mean? Because um, this is where it does look really, really sus. We just had this whole ordeal for a few days of really, really manic, scary behavior and then we're being blamed for thinking it was manic, scary behavior because the one time rice gum through your phone, but now it's important to talk about the album because now you have more viewers watching and waiting for you to post something saying that you're mildly okay or you're taking care of yourself or you hear what we're saying and you're thankful for everyone's concern, but no. So this is where a lot of people feel like, mm, okay, so this was for for the album. <clears throat> because to be honest, the album didn't do very well. And I'm not being a critical cunt. I like Gabby's music for the most part. I don't like anything she's put out recently for the most part. But I like a lot of her older stuff. So I'm usually open to it. Um, but the album didn't do as well as I think she hoped. And she sent it's my understanding i didn't look too far into it but it's my understanding that a few of gabby's like really really big most supportive fans received cds that were like broken and gabby tried to pretend that that was art it seemed like they took it really personally which i would too for all the tumultuousness that i experienced between Gabby's like stands and myself. I'm, there are some of them that have been <laughs> pretty fucking vile. It's been nice to be at peace with them, but it's also, I mean, they've been through hell defending Gabby. And I know we all said at the time, like, man, one of these days you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it. And I'm so sorry for that day because that's gonna be so fucking disappointing. And I'm not gonna sit here and be like, I told you so, I told you you were gonna say that. It's not what I'm trying to say, but it's just, they've done so much for her and they've done so much to support her and she is just proving day after day after day after day that she doesn't give a fuck about anybody but herself just saying and then gabby decides that it's time to start um talking about what happened i want to take a minute to address just a little bit of last week so yes i was manic i and bipolar but it didn't start that way it started with me doing some spoken word poetry where i feel shit started getting really intense was when that guy came to my door and asked me to use my bathroom he asked if he could go for a run with me and i said well i really prefer that to be my alone time that's where i really meditate and think and pray and then he asked if he could pray with me and my friend was still on the phone i asked him if he wanted some coffee so um, I got his prints, I got his DNA, I had him say his full name on the phone. So then I get a text from a bunch of friends, actually, and they're like, Hey, I don't know who the fuck you think that guy is in your house, but get him the fuck out. I try not to get emotional about this, but it is upsetting. So I was just like pacing around in my room and like trying to calm myself down. And then I hear banging at my door and I thought it was him. So I just set my alarms on my phone and then I hear banging and banging and banging and then I got my glass break alarm that went off on my phone and then I got the critical alarm that went on my phone which means somebody has now broken and entered into my house. So Gabby goes on to talk about um, the police coming to her home for a wellness check. So I asked them, who is it? And they said, it's the police. So they just keep reminding me, we're here for your safety. I just have to ask you again and again and again. They kept asking me, do you want to hurt yourself? Do you want to hurt anybody else? And I said, no. And then talks about how the entire time she was super high. I think an important piece of this story too, that 
I should acknowledge is that I was high as fuck. Weed for me is more of a shroom trip, which is why I don't fuck with shrooms. I don't try LSD. I've never tried DMT because my weed experience is very hallucinogenic. So now that I've acknowledged that, yes, internet, you are right. I was manic. You plan on writing down in detail exactly what I was experiencing because it was not what the rest of the world was experiencing. And that being said, I also am not going to invalidate my own spiritual experiences because I do still believe in the divine. Okay, but do you believe in being racist, transphobic? I've always on my platform talked about being psychic and made a lot of videos about my ghost stories and that stuff is still real to me. And I am gonna stop smoking weed because while it used to be a shroom trip to me, it now appears to be some type of DMT trip. I will be going back to therapy because I learned how to cope with and deal with hypomania. Mania, I need to make sure that I'm talking to the right people. I'm currently looking for a therapist who is also spiritual and won't invalidate my spirituality or my beliefs because I still believe in everything that I said I believed in. I believe in God and angels and aliens because I believe in science and history and it's what's told through us through our oldest history books written by people who lived in an entirely different world who spoke a language that we don't know and that we translated and I respect my elders and I respect the history of the world and I respect that we don't know everything and we don't understand everything and frankly I think that people human beings have devolved I think that we were meant to be what we used to be. Maybe we were meant to stay fucking apes because apes are straight up living in nature. They can literally wreck a human being if they want and they don't because they're fucking peaceful until you fuck with them. They just hang out and have sex and masturbate and eat and hang with their babies and hang out in the fucking river. Like apes have it good. We're the monsters and we're weak as shit. We had to build guns. You know what I mean? And I believe that we did have a lot more like intuition and connection with the spiritual world, but technology took over. I have my own beliefs about philosophy and time and history and who we are as humans. And I will never stop being an individual who thinks freely. That being said, I'm also mentally ill. They're not mutually exclusive. I believe especially now with these experiences, I have a lot to offer the world and I have a lot of knowledge and insight that I can share. Now, I think this is another thing that I can absolutely get behind. I think that's great. I think the self-awareness of not smoking weed, great. Good choice. Good choice, Gabby. Everything I've seen of Gabby in the past like year where she has been, like she's been taking like these breaks from smoking weed and those seem to be her clearest, most productive times, which of course, it makes perfect sense. Um, although I guess weed affects people differently, but you get the gist, all right? Get off my dick. But I think that's a really, really positive thing. And I do think it's really, really positive that she wants to start going back to therapy. And I hope, for the love of God, for the love of Dramageddon, I hope that, 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 that she fucking does. Because we're still not done. I'm still not done being angry and you're gonna see why. And you're gonna see why I'm hoping like how this girl goes to therapy and is honest at therapy. I'm currently looking for a therapist who is also spiritual and won't invalidate my spirituality or my beliefs because I still believe in everything that I said I believed in. Okay, now this makes me concerned because to me that says I'm looking for someone who will say yes to everything I have to say. I'm looking for someone who's not going to tell me I'm wrong. I'm looking for someone who's not going to present to me reality in the face of delusion. I, I think it's really cool, honestly, that she feels that any of these things that have happened to her are something she is meant to see and feel and know and experience. I think that's a really cool way to look at something that could be really, I would imagine, traumatizing um, and difficult to deal with. But to that end, um, is that a means to deflect what you've done? Is that a means to repurpose it so you don't have to take accountability for it? Or is that truly how you feel? The world may never know. I feel like I can now serve as a precedent or a spokesperson for mental health. No, no, you can't. No, you cannot. 
not until you are taking care of your mental health. You don't get to be a spokesperson for mental health because you had a manic episode and posted three like 300 fucking TikToks. That's not that's not what this is. Just because you came out of it and you have clarity now and you understand uh, that you were manic and you said things you're not proud of and you you acted in a certain way and you were um, unfairly detained by the police and you know all of these just because all of these things happened, it doesn't make you like a an an expert or um, someone that should be offering advice or you know insight maybe yeah what does mania feel like what does that feel like tell me about that sure absolutely but you're not going to be some sort of like beacon for <laughs> mental health um it's just not going to happen gabby has done enough damage over the course of at least the past two years between last year's uh restigmatizing of adhd and this year's episode of mania and uh, unwillingness to take accountability for anything. You can't be a representative or an advocate for something that you're not taking care of. You need to be take. You need to be in a point where you can take care of yourself, where you can manage your mania in any way that it is possible. You need to be in therapy. You need before you can be everybody's hero. You need to learn how to save yourself you can't be everybody else's hero if you're not well enough to even put on the costume yet she has to do the actual work not the deflecting work not turning it your tragedies into a work of art not any of that you have to do the real hard work you have to be honest in therapy you have to <sighs> medicate when you can if you need to not be ashamed of medicating if it's what's going to help you. You know, you have to take the right steps. You can't medicate with weed for a few years and then, you know, uh, when you decide to stop and you think about going back to therapy, become everybody's mental health advocate. It doesn't work like that. Which I have always tried to do and now I feel like I get to really do. You get what you ask for. <laughs> And I feel like we're in this fucking simulation where everybody pretends now like mental health matters, destigmatize mental health. And if people are going through a mental health issue, still let's attack them and make fun of them. No, you know what? I will give uh, the only part of this I will concede on is that TikTok has very, very savage comment sections. But for the most part, people were very concerned and very delicate with how they spoke some people weren't because they've seen your pattern of behavior so again yeah maybe some people were unkind and were making fun of you or whatever but this is the precedent that you've set for yourself this is the precedent that you have set making every summer a drama and trauma filled romp full of innocent bystanders treated as collateral damage, hurting other people emotionally, making everybody concerned about you. You can't cry wolf forever, okay? A lot of people were concerned this time. I don't think a lot of people are going to be concerned next time because this has just proven, even if it was, even as I believe, this, you know, this manic episode, that being legit, it doesn't change the fact that the aftermath is not being cleaned up. And we're gonna get to that. Having a mental health crisis does not make you exempt from criticism or from needing to clean up after what you've done. It's not a get out of jail free card. It's not a, a, a free pass to walk away from the house you just set on fire. And maybe a decade later we'll free them the britney spears thing has to die it has to die right now you are not britney spears gabby hannah and britney spears are in no way the same none whatsoever none not at all not even a little bit not even a little bit as badly as gabby wants everyone to believe that she is being treated exactly how britney spears was she is wrong and as far as mania or hypomania goes just because somebody's manic doesn't mean they're dangerous to themselves or anybody else. No, but it does mean that they have the potential to be. And no one is inside your head. 
No one is saying, oh, well, she's definitely manic because it's not a name tag that you wear. So how, are, how is everybody supposed to know? And with so many videos on TikTok, you are handing them all of this on a silver fucking platter. Here's my mania. Here it is, it's right here. Look at it, look closer, look at it, fucking look at it. Just because somebody's saying things in a way that you don't like or that you don't understand or that you don't agree with or you find offensive in some way does not mean that they're dangerous. That's not why people called. The first thing Gabby should have said was thank you for your concern because people who called, called out of concern that you were going to hurt yourself or hurt someone else. We've watched Gabby have numerous issues online. No one called for a wellness check because they didn't like what you said. No one thought you were dangerous to yourself or someone else because you said racist or transphobic or insensitive things about young parents or because they believe differently religiously than you do. They called because you made hundreds of TikToks claiming you were the second coming of Jesus Christ laughing at people who showed concern, let a stranger into your home, and then claimed you were fine when you clearly were not. So gaslighting people into being, into thinking that they're further stigmatizing mental illness and mental health disorders because you don't like that they called for a wellness check, that's gaslighting. That's gaslighting. And does not mean that you should be calling the police and putting their life in danger and wasting the resources. Why would their lives be in danger if you're not a danger to yourself or others? That's my question. If I wasn't actually like a sane person and had a good head on my shoulders and had my fucking shockers balanced, if I had seen those cops and tried to run, if I would have tried to attack them, if I would have freaked out and screamed hysterically or kicked my feet around or like caused chaos like I could have been really hurt or I could have been taken to a mental hospital and I wasn't because even though I was in a manic episode that doesn't mean that I'm need to be locked away and need like treatment or adult supervision 24 7. No one is suggesting you need adult supervision 24 7. If you needed treatment that's okay. Do you realize that you are further stigmatizing mental illness and mental health disorders by being so vehemently against treatment? It wouldn't have been a bad thing if you needed to be treated. It wouldn't have been a bad thing if you needed someone else to be at your home. It wouldn't have been a bad thing. It would have been you taking responsibility for yourself, taking care of yourself when you didn't know that you needed it. For fuck's sake, people were looking out for you for once. People were actually on your side. People wanted you to be okay. And instead of saying, hey, thank you, that's really nice that you wanted me to be okay. Instead, we're doubling and tripling down on this idea that I was fine. Mania isn't that bad. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. If you have a treatment plan, it's perfectly fine. Or to be shot with medication, like, no, just let me live in my fucking little nest that I built. Then stop posting TikToks like that. It could have been as easy as when she came down from, from the, the manic episode, going through all the TikToks you posted, apologizing for where you fucked up, deleting them all, and moving forward. Instead of gaslighting everybody into thinking that, you know, you're you're fine and everybody else is, is, is overreacting or they're trolls or they're, you know, they're the tabloids. So, of course, they're trying to make a story out of this. You're making a story out of it yourself. You're doing it yourself. Like, always. Like, always. This is a pattern. Like, I'm a pretty... I'm a pretty solitary person. Like I spend a lot of time alone. I, I spend a lot of time with agoraphobia and really severe anxiety. I do have a, a OCD, ADHD, uh, CPTSD. Um, a doctor once told me that I'm likely autistic, but I didn't pursue an official diagnosis because 
if you're autistic in America, you can't adopt a baby. Agencies can't stop you from adopting or fostering just because you have a disability. You're allowed to use programs and services that other people in your situation can use. First of all, Gabby Hanna shouldn't have a child because of all of the behaviors, not the ones that come from her mental health disorders or her mental illness, but the ones that come from her as just a person. Those are reasons why Gabby should not be allowed to adopt. And by the way, I would imagine that, I don't know, Gabby's history online that is very, very viewable uh, would likely stand in the way of her adopting before any sort of autism diagnosis. I'm not a danger to myself or anybody else, um, but I do appreciate anybody's concern if you called out of concern, but please don't do that. Thank you. I love you. Please don't do that. Don't call out a concern about Gabby anymore. Nothing says I'm fine. Like, please don't call the cops. They just change so much in content and context. Like, when I went back to the beginning and I was watching it, it was just spoken word poetry. And yeah, I screamed in that video, the help me video, because I am trying to get attention on it. Help me, help me, help me help us. That was performance. But then when it turns into people calling the police because they're not listening to what I'm saying in context. To blame the audience that she was attempting to bring attention to this TikTok about her passion for homeless babies. And then when you get the attention, it's not the correct attention. So it's time to gaslight your followers about the way that they give you attention. I'm not afraid to offend people. I think that good art offends people. Like Lady Gaga showed up on the red carpet in a fucking meat dress. Yes, but Lady Gaga is a performance artist and you are a woman screaming on TikTok. I know, I know. Two New York Times bestselling books, I got it, I got it. That pissed people the fuck off. It was offensive to a lot of different people, right? That's art. You want people to talk. Warhol was highly controversial. Da Vinci in his time was controversial. Van Gogh never sold a painting. Cut off his fucking ear. Everybody thought he was crazy. Poe died a poor fucking alcoholic. But you're not them. That's the thing, okay? That's the thing. Creating a spectacle and then being upset when the upsetting things you're saying and doing come back to you as, hey, this is upsetting, doesn't give you the right to then double down and say, you guys, you, you took it the wrong way. This was art. Because my heart is pure and I love all people. And sometimes in trying to prove a point, it, it just misses the mark. And I missed the mark a couple times, but I'll fix it when the time is right. I never cause drama or ca fake anything to promote a project and people are always like every time she has a project coming out i always have a project coming out and i'm always mentally ill <laughs> we're gonna put a pin in that comment for just a second okay then gabby kind of went into her usual gabby hijinks of dancing and mirrors and yada 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 oh my god i completely forgot that she disrespected the entire did community as well she acts like she's perfect she acts like she knows everything. Why does she always think she's so much smarter than everybody else? Oh my God, she thinks her poetry is so deep. I knew there was one missing. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And then said she cured her DID, ADHD, OCD, etc., etc. Again, I know this was done completely in mania, but like, girl, hugely doing a disservice to folks that have DID, that folks that legitimately have DID. Also, um, is this your Trisha Paytas arc now? Is that what we're doing? It's been a long, long time since, uh, since we've had the Trisha Paytas talk, so anyway. So the only thing that I can really think of that I said that could be perceived as racist is on a live stream I said something about black fathers and black families, right? What I meant by that is statistically, black families do have single parent homes. And because of that, we as a society need to fix the socioeconomic problems and inequalities. I grew up in a really poor, high crime neighborhood where I was one of the only white kids. Oh, that's another thing. So I kept referring to myself as colored. I am a real big fan of words and their literal definitions. 
colored, having color or colors, especially as opposed to being black, white, or neutral. So when I refer to myself as colored, I am neither black, white, or neutral. First of all, if Gabby scrolled down an iota, you would find where her narrative is not supported. Yes, having a color or colors, especially as opposed to being black, white, or neutral, as in strings of colored lights. And if you go scroll down a little bit, relating to people who are wholly or partly of non-white descent, and it is noted as offensive or dated terminology. Colored is a racial descriptor historically used in the United States during the Jim Crow era to refer to an African American. If you are unaware of what the Jim Crow era uh, represents, it is trying to make anti-black, specifically anti-black racism legitimate. It's what legalized racial segregation. None of that applies to Gabby Hanna. And as a Middle Eastern girl who presents as a white girl with a big nose and somewhat frizzy hair, I never fit in anywhere. I definitely have been discriminated against and treated like not a white girl. My features that I get made fun of the most are my Middle Eastern features. Whether or not Gabby is from the mid Middle East, no matter how Lebanese your nose is, colored does not apply to you. I'm a white girl and I'm a single parent. I know a lot of single parents. Yes, there are racial disparities. There are lapses in opportunities. <clears throat> there are all types of issues, racial issues, that are at the core of the lack of support for black families. But this is not that. This is not what you were trying to do. Because if you were, you wouldn't re have referred to yourself as colored. You wouldn't have tried to double down and say that you were comfortable using words like nappy uh, or ashy as a kid and you just didn't know any better. There are a lot of instances like that, but they're not justifications for racist sentiments. The last thing I want to say on this topic is that while I know I said that opportunities in education aren't afforded the same to everybody, but while they aren't presented at the same age, I want to make sure that every young black, Asian, Indian, Mexican, any color, any race, person in America at least, is absolutely capable of anything that they want to do. And there isn't a single system or person that can stop you from doing exactly what you want to do. Well, actually there are a lot of them. And how are you planning on doing that? Because now that we're no longer in our, in our manic state, I wanna hear about how you're gonna do these things. I'd love to hear a plan. Because one time I heard about the fuck money fund, um, but I'm missing your foundation for, you know, unwed black women who are raising families by themselves. I'm missing your foundation for homeless babies. What I'm not missing is your 9 million TikToks where you're screaming and up on some fucking soapbox about things that you're absolutely ignorant about. The problem, I believe, is that young people in high crime and low income areas, which are usually heavier in black people than white people, socioeconomically, it's just how it's been. It's the encouragement and the education and the examples of people who have made it that need to be demonstrated in those areas. No, <clears throat> I mean, yes, sure. Um, it's also the funding for their schools. It's also the eradication of high crime. It is also the care for the people. So yeah, it'd be great to really shine lights of example on people who've come from those statistics, socioeconomical backgrounds. But like, you have to do the work to help get them there. If that's what you want, if what you want is to extend help to people in worse situations than you, you have to do it. Like you can't just keep fucking talking about it and going, you know what I think we need to do? When someone does good and they come from a bad socioeconomical background, we should go like this. That'll help, right? Guys, you, you can't, these are just words. This is nothing.
This is doing nothing. Show me what you're doing. This is a math problem that you think you already know the answer to, so you're not bothering to show your work. Show your work. I can speak to Chicago, okay? I was born and raised in Chicago. And when you go to these higher crime neighborhoods, right, if you drive through, there's a lot of things you'll notice, right? There are a lot of families who deserve better than the garbage on their streets that is never taken care of, the dilapidated buildings that are never taken care of until they become gentrified by a bunch of white people moving into their neighborhood and pushing them out. You almost never see high volume consumer stores, right? Um, no one is putting money into these places. That's the issue. Money needs to go into these neighborhoods to help alleviate those pressures so that the focus is not crime, is not poverty, is not single family households, so that the issue is these children receiving an education, receiving the food they need, receiving the care and safety they deserve, right? So she went all the way around the block to tell you her perspective of these racial disparities. Only she forgot where we lived. She walked four houses past and then tried to come up with a different explanation for how she got there. Thank you for leaving this comment and for giving me the opportunity to clear up this misconception. I actually didn't say that. What I said was I grew up in a town with a lot of black girls. I grew up specifically in an area that was primarily black. And we all just used the words nappy and ashy, white girls and black girls, and nobody ever expressed any type of concern about it because that was just what we were raised with. If we were in school and we needed to borrow somebody's brush, be like, yo, can I borrow your brush? My hair is nappy. Or if your friend notices your legs are dry, she might throw you her lotion and be like, girl, you're ashy, put on some lotion. It was never racist because none of us were ever saying it in a racist context. Great, yeah, cool. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. We used all kinds of terrible words. And um, eventually, as you get older, you realize, oh shit, I probably shouldn't say that. And then you don't. It's, it really doesn't need to be a three minute TikTok. See, when people say things like invalidate the DID community, I remember saying that I cured DID. Right, so you invalidated the experience of having DID because you can't just cure it. You invalidated people who have DID. You invalidated their experience by saying you have DID. Whether or not you think you have DID, you've always thought you had DID, you do not have diagnosed disassociative identity disorder. You don't have DID, you didn't cure it thought I had DID. I would watch back footage of myself and be like, who the fuck is that? Like I would have different voices, different mannerisms. Like it was really disorienting to me. And then I would watch back these dissociative episodes where I would literally, and in fact, I have so many of them on camera where I do the thing, like where they say that they're like switching personas, right? So I'm like, holy fucking shit, I have DID. See, this is the thing, is you're getting hung up on semantics. And again, we all know how Gabby Hanna feels about semantics. Get the fuck out of your own cunt if you it's... care that much about semantics. I do know what you're talking about. You know what? The way I delivered that video was incredibly insensitive. And I do apologize for that. So the video that this is referring to is I said something about, oh, did you meditate and like your imagination created a character? Again, I am apologizing for this because it was worded so poorly. So here was my intention. This is the problem with Gabby Hanna is when she apologizes, she really just wants a leeway to say, hey, okay, well, maybe I didn't mean that. Here's what I, here's what I think you wanna hear that I meant. This, that's not an apology. I'm sorry, but never an apology. And I feel like we've been here with Gabby Hanna so many times. I'm sorry, but is not an apology. Impact over intent, right? Your intentions could have been good. And I'm sure they were. I believe that's what she's about to say, that her intentions were good. And, um, but that doesn't mean we need to hear it. Your words still hurt people. And your apology is not the time to explain what you meant because intention and impact do matter and the impact clearly was bad, but the intention was good. So please 
Now that I've apologized, hear me out. Every time Gabby Hanna says, now that I've apologized, I want to die. Now that I've apologized does not mean... <laughs> First of all, it was a bad apology. It was barely an apology. And to then go on and be like, well, now that I've said I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's the other way I want to invalidate your disorder. So as somebody who really thought they had DID and has pretty severe CPTSD, this was my way of reframing the situation that made it not a like mental illness. So much of mental illness, I believe, is actually supernatural powers. Okay, but you can't make a mental illness not a mental illness because you say it's not a mental illness. <laughs> like, that's not how things work. I don't want to listen to the rest of this TikTok. It makes me mad. There is one more thing I would like to say to the trans community. I posted a video where I expanded a bit on what I meant to say and very poorly misfired. Yeah, let's take a look at that one. Because this was her follow-up to the situation where she was talking about... Um, trans people being confused. Dear trans babies, I misspoke in a major way and I'd like to expand on what I meant. First of all, you can't even use your own voice in this TikTok. Right off the bat, I don't believe you. You are valid and loved and regardless of whether or not you like me, I will continue to fight for you. Have you ever heard of the term of like, um, performative ally just because you think you're an ally to somebody or you think you're helping even though nobody wants you to um they don't then consider you an ally a lot of us feel confused about our identities and sexualities because as you know society has created a gender binary cool no one said trans people are confused so Sex is what you're born with between your legs. Gender is how you feel in between your ears. Gender was created for linguistic purposes. Cool, let's condescend and tell trans people about gender. That'll fix it. Throughout time, because it was necessary for survival in the past, men and women were expected to fill certain roles in the home and workplace. Fast forward to 2020 to where both men and women can do any job they like. Men can stay at home and care for the babies and women can go out and be the breadwinner. But society can still be cruel and unforgiving to those who express themselves differently. Being trans is not expressing yourself differently. It's expressing yourself authentically. To things they do not understand. Effeminate men and masculine women are bullied. It's not fair. Gender dysphoria is a real and scientifically recognized issue. Anyone who tells you otherwise is ignorant to the facts. I would never want anyone to feel anything other than accepted as exactly who they are born to be. Which is why I told you you were confused and all you needed to do was love yourself. I take hormones daily, often prescribed to MTF trans patients for acne. My doctor told me most women stay on it because they enjoy the other side effects of lowering their testosterone so much. Hormone therapy works when used properly. I'm an advocate for it. Okay, so you understand how taking hormones works, and therefore you understand the whole trans experience? Life is so long, and for those of us fortunate enough to live in a free country, we get to be whoever we want to be. That's absolutely untrue. The, the crimes against fucking... Trans people, trans women specifically, black trans women specifically, are, you don't get, this is not a free country where you get to be whoever you want to be, especially now. Yeah, you can, legally. That means you can wear what you want, call yourself whatever you want, and do whatever you want for a living. Actually, there are a lot of socioeconomical roadblocks to doing whatever you want for a living, but um, yeah, you can wear what you want. Yeah, call yourself whatever you want, do whatever you want for a living. Okay, cool, that has nothing to do with being trans. Being trans isn't a choice. It's not, it's not like a Rolodex of things that people are like, oh gee, what should I be today? Oh, well, Tata, looks like you're a woman today. Guess you're trans, hope you're not confused. It's not a choice, it's a discovery. My only encouragement to young trans people if you need to hear it, is that you don't have to make any of the big, scary decisions right now. It breaks my heart that the suicide rates pre and post surgery are nearly identical. I'm not trans, but I relate heavily with trying to change my outside to feel better inside. 
I've had so many invasive and painful procedures in pursuit of inner peace. I'm so grateful I didn't get a nose job when I was younger. That was Gabby Hanna equating having a transitional surgery as a trans person to the societal pressure of getting a nose job. Vanity over authenticity. It is so oversimplifying to say that trans people are having surgery, transition surgery, to feel better on the outside or on the inside. Better is not the point. Authenticity is to feel what you were authentically born. The bot making the outside match the inside. It's not the same thing. You can't relate to the trans experience. You cannot. I cannot. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I can. Because I can't. I still regret piercing my lip when I turn 19 because I have a tiny scar on my face. Oh, wait, never mind. She can absolutely relate. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't know about the lip piercing. Sorry. As you know, gender can be fluid in certain individuals. That means, in the future, you might change your mind. And if they do, that is their problem, not yours. And you might decide you want children of your own, but can't conceive due to premature medical intervention. It's okay. Thank goodness that there are a bajillion children that need to be adopted. Having Procreating is not a reason to hold off on your transition surgery to make you feel more comfortable in your own skin, to make you feel like you are authentically who you are. If you heard anything Gabby Hanna said and you thought there was any legitimacy to it, please, please delete it from your brain. She goes on to say, it's okay to take your time, experiment with your appearance, fashion, and identity. That's <sighs> missing the mark. And if and when you're older, you still want to medically alter your appearance. It's not about appearance. It's not about appearances. Not everything's about vanity. Of course I support you. Take it slow, enjoy the process. It shouldn't hurt or make you feel sick. So that was one of the most misguided things I've ever heard from someone who supports trans folks. So she comes back another day or two later to address what she's addressed. If you're expanding on what you meant to say and you still misfired, maybe you should ask your doctor if admitting that you were wrong is right for you and then um, see if you can get him to prescribe you shut the fuck up. I think a big dose of that would um, help alleviate the problem. But first of all, I want to say sorry for the way that fucking came out of my mouth. Now that I've apologized. <laughs> now that I've apologized, let me try a third time and see if I can get you convinced that I meant something else than both of the things I said before. <laughs> Can I please explain to you what I meant? You did already. <laughs> I don't think you know what you meant. <laughs> so what I said was to my trans babies, mama loves you. You're just confused. So I, and I don't know what this is about me, but I get really hung up on words and their definitions and their technical applications. Only when it's convenient though. Like only when I'm using words like colored and um, I'm telling trans people that they're confused. <laughs> Cause otherwise we know how Gabby Hanna feels about semantics, right? Get the fuck out of your own c if you it's care that much about semantics. So I'm not gay or trans, but I have a lot of LGBTQIA plus friends. That reads a lot like my one black friend, but okay. I've also heard a lot of their stories. And most of them start with like, ever since I was a little girl or a little boy, I was just so confused or I didn't understand why as a little girl, I related so much to the little boys or why I was so attracted to other girls. Yeah, okay. And confusion is a part of life, but it doesn't dictate why someone is trans or gay or bi or pan or non-binary. Like it, confusion at any point in your life does not dictate why you are who you are. It's about discovering that you are who you are. Does that make sense, Gabby? Might be closer to what you meant, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Instead of the boys, like I'm supposed to be, or vice versa. Whenever people are questioning and first exploring their sexuality or their gender identity as somebody who isn't born cis and straight, it starts with confusion because the standard default that's put on us is 
boys like girls and girls like boys. So to me, confusion is not a bad thing. It's just what it is. Cool, um, but also confusion, again, is not why people are trans or gay, etc. okay? Those are not the reasons why they are that way. They are that way because that is who they are authentically. Just because you believe things to be a certain way does not give you the right to invalidate trans people. It just doesn't. And that's what you could have said. I, you could have just sat there and said, you know what? I misstepped, I misfired, I misspoke. This wasn't it. I will do better to listen to the trans folks in my community and my many, many gay and trans friends that I definitely have. So I'm sorry that I said that you were confused. That's not how I meant it, I swear. And I just want you to know that I fucking really, really fucking passionately care. And if I could instill confidence and self-love to the deepest fucking center of your core, that's what I would love. Again, it's not that trans people hate themselves. It's that they don't feel like they are in the authentic body that they should be. Misconstruing what it means to be trans to make your point. You could just simply say, I was ignorant about this issue. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for explaining that to me. Acting different. And by the way, I have a fucking bone to pick because I'm hilarious. You know what? You used to be hilarious. There were times you would do things and I would think, God, fuck, Gabby's funny as shit. Um, but you're not funny anymore. It's not funny. This kind of shit is not funny. You're not going to get applauded for being a comedian when you're re-stigmatizing and over-stigmatizing things that you should be trying to destigmatize. Or at the very least, shutting the hell up. Your comedic skills are not what we're here to talk about. Okay, you're not deaf noodles. What we are here to talk about today, let's talk about this real quick. Like, how can you have children and involve yourself online with drama? Like, wait, wait, what, time, what, dude? what are you saying? What do you mean, what am I saying? <laughs> I had a kid and I own the biggest drama channel there. I like created oh. this genre. Oh. When I was going through that drama with her, that she kept fucking inflicting on me for years and years. You mean like you're doing right now? I literally couldn't even pay enough attention to my cats. They started shitting on my countertops because I was neglecting them because I had to fucking edit videos. Like, I just don't understand how you can have children and start fake drama with people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, on July 4th, that means this woman, this video that she put I out, she like, how much time were you away from your fucking children, dude? <clears throat> so here's what we're not gonna fucking do. We're not gonna drag Jesse Smiles into this. I know, I know, it's bitter town because Jesse and Lily Marston are, you know, doing a really fucking awesome podcast that's doing really fucking well. And you're trying to over correct things you should have just apologized for after making like 250 TikToks. Um, I know it's time to throw Jesse in the ring because that's the pattern, right? It's always support women until it's women you don't like. Gabby knows that the one place she is safe to do this, where she will get minimal to no pushback, is with the commentary bros, right? Um, specifically with Keemstar. Um, she tweeted this. I actually love the idea of throwing a party with just me and all the commentary boys so they can see how fucking cool and fun I am in real life. Mm. That's some pick-me energy, sweetheart. When I'm not crying over some toxic-ass moms who start drama online instead of taking care of their babies. Ha ha ha, I'm manic so you can't criticize me, sorry. Um, what we're not gonna do is criticize moms. Moms get more hate than Gabby Hanna will ever see in her lifetime. And that's saying a lot because Gabby's gotten a lot of hate. Hate for moms, way higher. Also, uh, I I'm sorry, what? In that clip, did you just admit to like not caring for your cats? How are you gonna have a child? If something emotionally traumatic or upsetting befalls you, you're just gonna let your kids, what? Wear an anchor full of shit in their diapers? Explain to me how that works. How is somebody supposed to hand you a child if, if this is adoption is what you want? 
How's somebody gonna hand you a child when they hear how you care for your cats when there's drama online? You're not gonna come for Jesse. We're not doing this again. That's done, that's over. She put the nail in that coffin last year, it's over. Move on. Because now you can't say, Jesse always brings me up. Jesse always brings up our drama. Jesse always brings up our drama. Jesse always brings up our drama. You are bringing up your drama in a place where you feel safe because people like Keemstar, who already don't like Jesse, are right there to back you up, to gas you up, to tell you you're right. Jesse's children look very well cared for. They seem like they have plenty to eat. They have a roof over their heads, so they're not those homeless babies you're so worried about. They seem very well taken care of. Also, editing a video is um, part of her job. So if you can't balance emotions, um, your job and your child, and your child, and in your case, the cats, uh, are the ones that are suffering, then you need to reevaluate. But it seems like jesse has got a good balance. So maybe we don't start this drama again while you're grasping for straws, trying to make what you did okay. Trying to make the things that you've said okay. It's not gonna work. Your reputation and your own words and actions precede you. And you've lost this round. And I hope for the love of God, Gabby Hanna gets the help that she needs. I really sincerely mean that. I hope that she gets the help she needs because she does need help. She needs therapy at the very least. And I hope that she gets it. I hope she was serious about it because this pattern is gonna go on and on and on and on and on and on. She's gonna cry wolf until she has no voice. And it will be then that nobody cares anymore. And I worry that she's getting close to that point. But I do wish her the best. I do wish her a very happy shut the fuck up. And I do wish for lunch because I've been filming this forever. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Tell me your thoughts about everything that's been going on down in the comments. Remember to like the video, subscribe for more, and make videos whenever I feel like it. There's more fun content coming this week, I promise. Social media, Patreon, channel memberships, all of that is down below. Feel free to come join us for early access to these videos, among other weird ass perks. We're gonna do a live here soon, I promise. <coughs> that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Yada 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 yada. She had <coughs> coffee break. Look, 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 look. Excuse you. The fuck was that? <coughs> see this goofy head? You see this? You see this? It's not gonna focus on it. Do you see it? You know what I mean? My nose ring has been inside out this whole time. <coughs> <coughs>